with Telugu and Academy. Uh, in today's AP Geography, we'll see power sector of AP Geography. So, in a state of Andhra Pradesh. So, uh, if we take any sector like primary, tertiary or uh, primary, secondary or tertiary, power sector is a backbone of any economy in this world. You take it a state or country or region, whatever the thing is, power is a ruling one. So, if we don't have power or power sector is not developed up to the up to the mark, then that particular region or state or country will be underdeveloped or will be in a less development state. So, even for agriculture, that is a primary sector, and for in industries, that is for a secondary sector or service sector, that is a tertiary sector. Power is the backbone of any economy. We will we'll come to see uh, how this power sector, what are the power sector uh, details about the state of Andhra Pradesh. So, as we know that power is a crucial, is a crucial infrastructure ele uh, element. For, uh, if you take the any in infrastructure elements, Power is a major one. Afterwards, transportation, roads and other things, a service sector. But power leads it, leads in the infrastructure element because it required for the smooth functioning of, smooth functioning of any economy. So an efficient or resilient and financially robust if there is an efficient, resilient, financially robust power sector means that state's economy will be booming in all the three sectors. If in case a state is able to provide power 24 by 7 uh, to all the three sectors of the economy means obviously agriculture sector will develop and industries and service sectors also. So is essential for growth and poverty reduction. Everything comes with power. That is, uh, that's a reason. Like when light was invented, it was like an uh, what do you say, ajuba. People say ajuba. Light was invented. It was like ajuba. So the availability of reliable quality and affordable power. Yes, in this power sector also, it should be reliable. Means on and off. There should not be on and off power cuts. And quality power. Uh, less of uh, fluctuations if if you take like uh, if sometimes high voltages and low voltages dims and dips it should not be like that and affordable power affordable power means subsidized power it's not like that government or state government should not force force the citizens of that state uh, on uh, with heavy prices on per unit rate so is the rapid in the uh, in the rapid agriculture development and the industrial development of the economy of any state as we came to know the power sector should be the power should be quality it should be quality to power and next affordable and next affordable and reliable all the three things should be there yes if uh, every state do have power it doesn't mean that there is no quality. It should have quality. Quality in the sense without any fluctuations or any uh, dim and dips, sudden dim and dips or sudden high voltages or low voltages. And next is affordable power. That is called affordable power means uh, it should be for each and every citizen of that state should be in a position to uh, afford minimum power in their houses in their in their domestic places okay or even for the industries or even for the agricultures also so so uh, as we say the ministry of power means the ministry earlier the ministry of power used to be called as a ministry was in under ministry of energy energy sources but in 1919 to july from 1919 to July 2nd, the Ministry uh, of Power has been established, separated from the Ministry of Energy Resources. So, if we take hmm, power comes under 
which list which list list means we do we know that we do have three list union list state list and concurrent list power is a subject under power is a subject under concurrent list concurrent list means both union and state do have a say in the power but if it is under uh, state list means only states are authoritative to make any changes or any modifications in the particular subject if it is in the union list means only union or central government is the only power uh, authoritative uh, organization to make any changes in the that particular sector subject but power comes under concurrent list concurrent list means both union government that is a central government and state government can do modifications can alter can increase the prices and decrease the prices or subsidize the uh, power sector whatever or can uh, implement a new power uh, power plants whatever changes or modification done in the power sector uh, or done by both union government and the state government because it is in the concurrent list at the entry 38 in the list 3 of the seventh state uh, schedule this list of uh, in a uh, constitution of india this list comes under seventh schedule seventh schedule of the constitution of india if we get a question from power sector power sector is in which list uh, state union or concurrent it comes under concurrent list so in 1992 it was uh, separated from the ministry of energy resources and it has formed as a different ministry of power it got a spe uh, special status of ministry of power so the ministry of what is this ministry of power does actually what are its responsibilities what's the role and responsibilities the ministry of power is responsible for development of electrical energies in the country when we take to uh, when we talk about the ministry of power ministry of power what does it do it is the authority it is the final authority to develop electrical energy in the country any source it can be anything like it can be conventional energy or non conventional energy it is the whole and soul responsible for the electrical uh, energy in the country the ministry of power is responsible for the administration of the electricity act 2003 the energy conservation act 2001 and to undertake such amendments to these acts as may be necessary from time to time in conformity with the government's policy objectives so this ministry of power does this uh, from time to time it may amend its laws or it may bring its new laws according to the policy of the the then central government the then central government so when comes to this is our this is about the wholesome ministry of union ministry of power when it came into uh, when it been uh, divided from the ministry of energy resources or what is its roles and responsibilities and what kind of amendments or acts it does Uh, do it can do that is a uh, about a uh, min, uh, union ministry of power now coming back to the government of andhra pradesh power sector in andhra pradesh particularly in the state of andhra pradesh so the government of andhra pradesh was one of the pioneer states to initiate the power sector reforms in 1998 actually uh, coming to the history of andhra pradesh Uh, history of power sector in andhra pradesh means uh, from what time what kind of uh, changes it have been taken and what is the status now and what uh, changes it have gone through and all in 1929 um, in um, vijayawada in the city of vijayawada a private company have first started its electricity uh, with a diesel with the diesel based uh, technology in uh, in 1929 that to in the city of vijayawada 
So after that, what after that, 1938 and 39, again in Vijayawada and the surrounding regions of Vijayawada, electric electricity was distributed. So this is the uh, prior to independence. This was prior to independence. Pre-independence status of power sector or electricity in state of Andhra Pradesh. Coming to post-independence. In 1948, according to B.R. Ambedkar's power uh, laws or his uh, recommendations, on the recommendations of Dr. B.R. Ambedkar's uh, power sector recommendations in 1948, means by that time, state of Andhra Pradesh was not formed. Uh, after independence, even uh, in 1948, there is no particular state called Andhra Pradesh. It was under the state of Madras. It was under province of Madras. So, in 1958, after the formation of Andhra Pradesh state, APSCB means Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board was established on the recommendations of the then uh, Dr. B. R. Ambedkar's electricity uh, this thing commission. So first APSCB was established in the year 1958. What is the full form of APSCB? Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board. So in short form it is called as APSCB. So the erstwhile Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board was unbundled into six entities to focus on the core operations of power generation power transmission and power distribution. So, uh, in 1958, what happened? This APSCB, this Andhra Pradesh State Electricity Board has unbundled, means it has delegated its duties by forming three uh, corporations. One is AP Genco, another one is AP Transco, another one is Discoms. AP Genco means Andhra Pradesh Generation Corporation, Andhra Pradesh Power Generation Corporation. Generation in the sense production means uh, to produce, how to, how and where to produce this. It looks after the production of the power or electricity. AP Transco, Transco means Andhra Pradesh Transmission Commission Corporation, Power Transmission Corporation. Transmission means distribution, okay, uh, like after generation, what it has to be done? It has to be distributed in the whole in the whole city, in the nook and corner of this city. Oh, sorry, state. So this is AP Transco means transmission, and Discoms AP Discoms means distribution. Which area should be given? How much power, or uh, what what particular reason should be given power? That is called distribution. So now coming to If we come to the power reforms or electricity reforms in the state of Andhra Pradesh, the government reforms in power sector led to the formation of AP Janko on December 1998 and which year on December 1988 and commenced operations from Feb 1st 1999. So first uh, power related electricity reforms were in Andhra Pradesh took the electricity reforms in the year 1998. According to th those reforms, AP Genco was formed in the year 1998, but it came under uh, functioning. It started functioning from 1999 February. So, a uh, government of AP has unbundled into Andhra Pradesh Power Generation uh, Corporation, that is AP Genco, which generates power. And next is and transmission corporation of Andhra that is transmission AP Transco on Feb 1999 by electricity reforms. Uh, 
Why we we have this AP Genco and AP Transco? Because of the reforms in the Department of Electricity. Okay. So AP Transco was further again, again uh, once this okay once AP Genco and AP Transco were formed. So once AP Genco see first is AP S E B. Then here comes it has been unbundled or di uh, uh, divided into two corporation AP Genco. AP Genco means where power is generated or produced or it has been conceived. Okay. Next is AP Transco. Okay. Transco means transmission or uh, uh, like its distribution. Again, AP Transco has been divided into discoms. Again, AP tra uh, Transco is divided into discoms. Discoms means means distribution companies. This is for this is for further uh, like uh, further distribution means once gen uh, power is generated it will be transferred to ap transcos and this ap transco again further transfer it to or delegate it to discoms that are distribution companies so uh, apsb was andhra state electricity board was formed in the year 1958 and what about Genco and Transco? 1998, but came into force from 1999, that is, started functioning from the year 1999. So, again, further, this AP Transco is divided into discoms. Discoms is nothing but distribution companies. So, after on June, um, later again, see, ya, this is a scenario till. 2014 okay from 1958 to 1998 this is the scenario transco and janco again discoms until then 2014 this is the story or this was the scenario again in 2014 when uh, state of andhra pradesh has been bifurcated bifurcated into telangana and andhra pradesh again this has undergone again a tremendous change that is Later on, 2nd June 2014, when the state was bifurcated, AP Genco distributed all the assets and liabilities in power stations to both the states and Telangana Genco was formed for the newly formed Telangana state and AP Genco remained here. Yeah. So again, this generation, after uh, on June 2nd, 2014, after the bifurcation of the Andhra Pradesh into two states, Telangana and Andhra Pradesh. All the uh, this was divided according to the geography of the state. So all the Genkos which are in the state of Telangana were being all the uh, assets, liabilities, and all the power plants which are in the state of Telangana were given to the state of Telangana. And there Telangana State Genko has been started. And AP Genco has remained the same with the uh, power plants or assets and liabilities in the geogra geographical area or boundaries of the Andhra Pradesh. So again AP Genco, this is in the year 2014. Again AP Genco has been divided into Telangana uh, State Gen uh, Genco that is in the year 2014. All the power, this was... Uh, this partition has been done on the basis of geography, okay? But AP Genco remained for the state of Andhra Pradesh. There were no changes, further changes in the AP Genco. It has been remained the same. Now coming to AP Genco. What does it do exactly? Andhra Pradesh Power Generation Corporation, that is in short form, it's called as AP 
जेनको एपी जेनको मीन्स इट इज पावर जनरेशन ऑर्गेनाइजेशन ए पी इट डज इट जनरेट पावर मीन्स इट टैप्स इट टैप्स पावर प्लांट्स न्यू पावर प्लांट्स आर इंस्टॉल न्यू पावर प्लांट्स आर इंस्टॉल ऑन द पर्टिकुलर इफ इट इज ए हाइडल वन इज हाइडल वन इज दैन नियर द रिवर स्टेशन और देस कोल बेस्ड वन वॉट एवर और नेचुरल गैस बेस्ड वन इट डज द जनरेशन इट टैप्स द एनर्जी इट टेक्स इट क्रिएट्स द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी ओके इट जनरेट्स द इलेक्ट्रिसिटी देन इट अंडरटेक्स ऑपरेशन एंड मेंटेनेंस ऑफ पावर प्लांट्स एंड सेटिंग अप ऑफ न्यू पावर प्रोजेक्ट्स along upgrading power capacity apart from generation generating uh, electricity it is the responsibility of ap genco to take care of maintenance a uh, day to day maintenance of power plants or setting up of new power plants or new projects along upgrading the capacity upgrading power capacity means day by day it it is it's the duty of the genco it has to upgrade the power capacity by any sources it can be conventional energy or non conventional energy sources whatever it can be uh, river sources or coal sources or natural gas or uh, um, thermal or nahi to like what do you call um, wind energy or solar energy or even nuclear energy anything but ap genco is the responsible for generation maintenance of power plants and next um, for new power plants establishment of new power projects and upgradation of the energy upgradation of the electricity in the state mean more and more electricity of ge- generating and next next come to plant load capacity that is called as plf plant load capacity it's a plf uh, it's nothing but a ratio Ratio means if a plant, uh, suppose like for example, there is a plant in uh, imagine in the Vijayawada. What is its capacity, uh, and how much it is producing per year or generating per year, and what is its maximum capacity, and how much we can tap, how much we can tap energy from the particular power plant. Ante exactly in ante, okay power plant station ante. दाने कैपासी अंत फस्ट आफ् आल ओके इधी संवसर्नर्जी नी जनरेटल ओके नैक्स्ट दी मैक्सीम कैपासी अंत मन इंका बेवना मॉडिफिकेसन इंकना फर्दर टेक्नजी यूज मैक्सीम एंत एनर्जी एंत एलक्ट्रिटी पर्टिकुलर प्लांट नीचे मन टापेगलू अभी पीएल एफ दट का प्लांट लोड कैपासीटी that is called as plant plf plant load capacity is the ratio between the actual energy generated ante meer first of all enta chestunnaru asal deeni capacity enta deeni potential enta inka enta cheyachu idi this is the ratio so plf is the ratio between the actual energy generated by the plant to the maximum possible energy that can be generated with the plant working as is rated power and for a duration of entire year it is counted for a particular year for one year okay every year plf capacity is been uh, assessed plf capacity is assessed for every single year so if suppose if there is a question like this plf capacity or plant load capacity is considered for how many years one year Five years or ten years, then answer is one year because every year PLF capacity is being assessed. So now coming to state of Andhra Pradesh, um, AP Genco, that is our generation uh, corporation, has achieved ninety percent PLF. Means we have achieved our maximum. If suppose it's in hundred percent. we achieved almost 90% plf as against national average national average plf is only 85% so we are against we are more than the national average plf if we take the whole country if we consider the uh, plants all over the india pan india then uh, plant load capacities 
uh, if it taken for one year means it is only 85 percent but when coming to Andhra Pradesh it is 90 percent PLF capacity of a state of Andhra Pradesh is 90 percent it's against the national average which is 85 percent only so this is a plant load capacity plant load capacity means potential of the uh, in a layman's language what is the potential and how much we are getting from it and maximum how much we can produce or we can tap more uh, electricity that is a, in a ratio form okay that's all for today hope you got this if any doubts please do comment thank you